All right, all right. It's that time again. Rich Casanova here in the Global Podcast Studios live from Atlanta. Alongside me, we have the guest of the hour, as always, Mr. Dwayne Hart. Uh, you can check him out at DwayneHart.com. So uh, we're going to, as usual, be talking cybersecurity, but this is a great one. We're going to be talking about why cybercrime is growing and why are criminals succeeding. But the second half of the show, we're going to dedicate to a kind of a recap of all things Cybersecurity, Dwayne Hart, and what um, kind of what what's happened in 2022. We might give you a, a teaser for 2023, but uh, <laughs> the man of the hour, Mr. Dwayne Hart, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here and in Global Podcast Studio. I can say that the year of 2022 has been very successful. I made a lot of great moves. One of yeah. The- You've been a busy dude or whatever. We're going to talk about that in the second half, what's happening. <laughs> but let's jump right into today's topic again is uh, why is cyber crime still growing and how are criminals succeeding? We actually have six topics along this um, uh, with this segment. But here's what we're going to do for this show. We're only going to give you three. You got to stay tuned for 2023 with the other uh, three. Uh, but real quickly, the bullet points are, um, you know, really when you look at the, our six topics, it's really business basic 101. This is what actually businesses, successful businesses do. We don't think of, you know, typically of cybersecurity hackers as a business, but it's a, it's a venture for them. They're, they're making profit, right? It's not the right kind of business, right? Uh, you could argue. Uh, but here's the topics in rapid, rapid fire. Um, what cyber criminals are, why they're succeeding because they're targeting people and their weakest link. Number two, they're doing their homework. Number three, uh, it's a numbers game. Think of it. If you have your business hat on instead of your hacker's hat, these same principles apply. Number four is uh, scams keep evolving in business. That would be technology. You got to stay ahead of the curb. Uh, five is patience pays off, right? A successful business entrepreneur. You got to stick it. You got to stick it out. You got to be in the game, right? Until it pays off. And then finally, um, you know, the criminals can operate from everywhere. Hello, have you heard of remote working lately, <laughs> right? Yes, I have. <laughs> so let's start with number one about targeting people, right? So in a business, you've got to know your audience and who to target. So um, uh, talk to us about that hacker's hat, but specifically the the cyber criminals. Um, what's involved in them targeting? Who is their audience? Who is the weakest link? Uh, some examples of that. Well, Well, first of all, hackers are lazy. Okay, <laughs> so let's just be honest about that. I've always stated this right hackers are probably one group of people that actually don't have a job but they find a way to get rich Mm -hmm. okay so and they like to prey upon the weakest link yep you know in this world of cyber security we always like to call them soft targets okay okay and and the idea is to find those soft targets right because that's the easiest entrance into a network, but but I've always stated that technology is a standard and humans are flexible. Okay. So when we look at humans, um, cyber hackers are humans themselves, and we have to understand that that they come from a human mindset, right? So they understand people. Okay, I mean, what's almost been done since day one, you know, mm-hmm. the pot picker. I mean, the picket, <laughs> I said the pocket pickers, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Um, now they're just taking it online, right? Yeah. With phishing attacks, for example. Yes, yes. So they go and take it online. But, you know, let's just get to the root of this here. And that hackers prey upon humans because humans lose awareness. If I now were to go back and think about all the cyber attacks that happened over the past five years, and if we did a root cause analysis, the answer always surfaces that why did they do that? Do they know that you're not supposed to open these malicious attacks? I mean, you know, like the attachments. Right. Did they even know that when you're on Facebook and so forth that you don't put your personal information up there? See, now, these are things that the cybersecurity cybersecurity industry talks about every day. And through cyber awareness training, it's supposed to help users raise raise their awareness. Okay. Now, now part of the reason why that humans are always preyed, they are preyed upon because they can be easily tricked. Okay. Right? If you find a disgruntled employee that's sitting in a bar somewhere, right, yeah. and if you're a hacker and if you want to do some social social engineering, all you have to do is have a conversation with that person, and they'll tell you everything you need to know. All right, hackers are hackers are friendly, and hackers are friendly because because they want information. Yeah, a lot of times they approach you like. Um 
with we're here to help you yes. right, solve your problem. And many times they put that malware on your computer and they're going to help you deal yes. with that, right? But also, too, let's just go on back. And one of the reasons that, that I think humans are praised because in most organizations and businesses, if you're not established in no human firewalls, you are going to have problems. Yep. And, you know, the concept of a human firewall is someone with a defensive mindset. It's always thinking about being the guardian, being the defender, being being that security guard in the front of IT. Yeah. So now they've, they've identified their target. The next thing we're going to talk about is them doing their homework. Again, mm-hmm. just like in a business, you got to find out who your customers are. You got to research your customers, right? Their customers are the people that are going to be vulnerable to these attacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you kind of teased on social media. So um, that's an example Talk to us about them doing their homework online from all of the profiles you've created. Well, right? well, first of all, if you go online, here's the way it works. If you really want to find a way to carry out a cyber attack, if you go to f- Facebook and you can create a page yourself and you say, hey, I, I personally would actually like to do, I'd like to do an age game where you have people to say, okay, Back in 1973, how old were you? Right, right. Yeah. And tell us what you was doing then and right. where did you live? Well, you just giving away two pieces of, pieces of, pieces of, pieces of information. Right. Your age, yeah. one, and two is where did you reside? So, so if someone calls up a bank, then those are two types of authentication methods they yeah. can use to gain access to, right. to your account. Now, it's called the age game. Okay. okay. All right. So, so with people, they become the weakest link because of lack of awareness and not really taking cybersecurity. Um, um, how could I say real or just not taking cybersecurity as as being critical? Right. And you know, it's sad to say that most organizations and people are not going to take action unless there's a negative event that happens. Let's say, for instance, they go to a bank and they realize that all their money has been taken out of the yeah, bank because, bro, bro. because they gave some information away. All right? That's, that shouldn't have happened. Now, we should not be getting to that level. Right. But in this world today, that still count as a lapse. And uh, hackers are smart people. Okay. And I'm going to admit it. Right. Okay. So they've done their smart. homework. Yes. <laughs> yes. They do their homework because they share information. And secondly, too, hackers are hackers are a recipient of regular people. Okay. Oh, yeah. They were the people that were on Facebook trying to protect themselves, but some kind of way, hackers realize that it's much more fun to become a hacker. And and there's a there's a gap in there, or there's a, uh, a lack. And so they see it as an opportunity. Yes. Again, like business, you you find your audience, you do homework, you find out uh, where their market is, uh, where there's a gap in the marketplace, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so you talked about, um, you know, the age game. We're going to uh, finish this segment with the third on the list of six is the numbers game, right? So billions of people online. Um, talk to us about, you know, you know invoicing and um, emails with instant messages, you know, bulk that kind here, of thing, yeah. Here goes, here, here goes the way to look at it is, is that the infrastructure of IT changes. As an organization moves from 1,000 assets up to 50,000 assets, you're more susceptible to cyber attacks. You think about the number of endpoints you have. You think about the software programs. You think about the number of people in your company. Think about the way that your architect is dispersed because your architect is probably in the cloud. It's probably located in California, right. probably located in the Midwest. All right. Now you have to have your security features in place. I'm talking physical security as well, right. too. Yeah. Because if it's located in a rural place that never have crime, they may not take cybersecurity, uh, you know, seriously. And, and, you know, there's a data center that kind of resides over there. Right. Okay. And all it really takes is one person to gain access to that data center and they could cause disruption for your entire enterprise. So, so when we look at the infrastructure and knowing that the infrastructure is always growing, problems are always going to surface, but also too, in the numbers game, you know, we have to look at people, too, because there are a great number of people that are gaining interest in hacking. Right. Okay. And I'm talking 
uh, from the unethical side because ethical hacking is there to try to prevent the unethical hacking from happening. So they're right. basically the same group of people, except that, except that one side is is a is a criminal and the other side is not a criminal. Okay, right. see that's the only difference, and. And I think the numbers game have to play as well, too, because as you put these endpoints in your system, yep. you're going to have more issues. Um, and also, it, too, when it comes to numbers, it's money. Yeah. <laughs> there, 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 yeah, there's some um, there's some dollar bills on some currency on the other end. So, yeah, that's a great way to um, uh, sum that up. And just to kind of recap on the numbers game before we move into uh, recapping 2022, what you've accomplished and some of the uh, stats there. But what's interesting to me about the numbers game, again, the business. If you send out enough emails, make enough phone calls, make enough business, go to enough networking events, you're going to succeed at some point, right? Yes. So same thing with hackers, right? It's a business to them. You know, don't kid yourself. It's a business model, right, for profit. And um, uh, some of the things we talked about there, with the billions of people online, two or three quick examples about this um, is just that simple inbox, right? That's the biggest ent- one of the biggest entry points, and the um, and attaching an invoice to be paid. I know as a business owner, I can't, sometimes I'll get an invoice. I'm like, that company. I don't think I've ever done business with that company. But if it's a large enough organization, and you have somebody that that's responsibility is to uh, clear all those invoices, they may not, you know, um, double check all this stuff because it's a similar company they've done business with in the past. They just arbitrarily pay it. They don't want late payments, and the boss has told them, you know, you're in charge of accounting, get that paid, right? Well, and again, if they send out 5,000, 50,000, 100,000, somebody's going to hit the pay button uh, somewhere, right? And generate money. And then finally, um, the newest thing that started to hit my phone is a text that appears from, quote, my, I'm holding up air quotes, from my bank or some type of financial institution, uh-huh. right? I mean, I guess because I've sat across the, the dude, the cybersecurity dude so long, I'm not clicking on those links. But there's somebody on the other end of that phone, if they send out 10,000 text messages, somebody's going to click. That's right. It's always, it always talking about the lowest common denominator. Yeah. All it really takes is for one person out of a 10,000 to yeah. actually cause havoc. That's all it really takes. You know, because we're dealing with digital crime, right? Because right. the physical crime, you may need six people to break into a bank. Yeah, and but, enough hours in the day, right? You're, right? It's a finite, right? But in these digital crime, yeah. you need one person that's sitting behind a computer. Right. That's that's pretty much all you need. And they can run a software program that, like it used to be, like um, hold on to, don't give out your cell phone number, right? But now they're not even concerned about what number it is. It just runs through a program and just starts spitting out digits 24 hours a day, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't care if it's a landline or a cell phone or or wherever, right? And it's coming from sometimes from foreign countries that don't, our laws can't really protect us. Yeah. We got to protect ourselves. See, see, I want to, I want to say one thing about cybersecurity. Okay. It's on us as individuals. Right. Because at the end of the day, when a negative event happened, it's much harder to clean that issue up. Yeah. So it's easier to just make sure that you stay aware and you stay safe because you can uh, prevent issues and also, too, you can avoid the headaches. Because, because I've always had the belief, at the end of the day, it's on you as a person. Yep. Because we know what a hacker does, because yep. we can't complain about them, right. okay? Because we know their sole premises is to cause havoc and damage. Yep. So if we become wiser people, then we can counter that concept, and we can beat them to the finish line. Well said. And speaking of finish line, uh, this is a perfect time to segue into our next uh, segment. And stay tuned again. And um, uh, upcoming for the new year, we're going to be talking about the other three uh, topics in these areas of cybercrime and why it's growing and what we can do about it. Um, and again, Rich Casanova here in the Global Podcast Studios here in Atlanta, Georgia, having a great conversation as always with Mr. Dwayne Hart. And uh, all these topics uh, that you've heard about, if it's, you know, raises a flag or of interest, you can uh, contact, just reach out to Dwayne at DwayneHart.com. There you can find everything we're going to talk about, uh, all things cybersecurity, all of his media releases. Uh, again, you don't need a bunch of different websites and handles and social media. Just go to DwayneHart.com. Dot com. So, Dwayne, let's talk about 20, 
22. And kind of a recap. So um, you, you, there's a number of things you accomplished and are continuing. So, for example, uh, your ongoing series for your podcast is uh, just wrapping up season two, right? Yes. Season season two is in the house. Yep. And season two was very important because season two was about trying to connect cybersecurity. All right. You know, I wanted to focus on looking at the cybersecurity sectors that you have, looking at the different programs, looking at some of the issues such as digital parenting and yeah. trying to connect all of those together into cybersecurity. Because because when I did my um, speaker's video, that was one of the topics that I brought up um, about cyber talk. Right. And cyber talk is about connecting cybersecurity because I've always felt that if we can connect cybersecurity, we can resolve problems because we have a problem in the industry now where, where we have silos. Silos are saying that the only piece of cybersecurity I need to be worried about is my password. (laughs) Right. Okay. (laughs) See, that's a silo. That's so 1990s, whatever. Yeah. 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 So let's, so let's look at the much wider picture and make a determination on how we can connect cybersecurity, which was, what this season did and yeah. it focused on all the connectors that you have. And, um, there was a whole lot of success with it. And also too, you know, this season brought on something else for you too, Rich, because now I think you got that picture about the hacker's hat, right? Yeah. And, I got my hacker headphones on, but yeah, <laughs> and my, actually my hat, but yeah. Okay. But, um, so speaking of season two and 2022, I've got three, uh, topics that you covered and may, I'd be interested to see what's on your short list as far as topics. But, uh, to me, I'm going to turn to you next about your topics, but we really covered A to Z, but I thought if I had to narrow it down to just two or three, uh, what were cut, very intriguing, I think the veterans episode about, um, <sighs> veterans and active military, also, the auto transportation uh, topic was very fascinating. And finally, on churches. So I don't know if you want to elaborate on some of these or what else besides those three were on your list of it uh, that you thought were really spiked. You know what? I am a veteran, so I'm going to take that one okay. on the veteran. See, now, when it comes to veteran, I also focus on workforce development, too, right, because yeah. I realize a lot of veterans are trans- transition out of the military. Yeah. And when you transition out of the military, you hear so much bogus information about what you need to do for your career, right? You know, it is um, one one bogus theory is that they're going to hold your job for 90 days. Nobody will hold your job for 90 days, okay? All right, right. so let's just get rid of that one. Uh, part of the other one that was discussed is the scams that are occurring for veterans as well, too. And, you know, to just recap on that, and they normally happen because veterans live in a private enclosed environment, with the government and um, they are also victims because of the way the monetary system works because veterans get a guaranteed paycheck every month. So if you can get them to fall into a scam and to sign a piece of paper, then guess what? That's guaranteed money to you every month. Uh, Focusing on that and also too, yes, looking at the churches and uh, talking about the protection rings and uh, knowing that churches are, susceptible to cyber attacks because because they don't produce goods and services. So they're really sometimes not so focused into cybersecurity and nobody would think that they are a um, hacker's appetite. Yeah, you wouldn't think like there'd be great opportunity there. And you yeah. also think it's a, it's a nonprofit typically and a lot right. of volunteers. Um, but yeah, it's, and again, going back to our earlier conversation about doing their homework and targeting uh that's a, unfortunately, somewhat of an easy target. Well, what I did some research, and I went to a couple of churches' website just to get an indication of their cybersecurity practices. I'm finding that some of them are practicing um, the idea of an NDA. Let's say before you join that church, you got to sign a, non, a non-disclosure agreement. Some of the other ones are are having portals set up where where you register to become a member but then after that, you get an encrypted email, <laughs> okay? Right, yeah. All right, which is which is also good. And then I've noticed that when it comes to donors and so forth, um, some of them are resorting to donation in a physical form as well, too. But 
But if we go back and look at this year, you, you know, there's been a couple of cyber attacks on um on some churches and, you know, some personal data have been stolen. But but churches have to make sure that they have cyber insurance in place, because if you have a congregation of 10,000 people and if 5,000 accounts get compromised, then yeah. somebody's held responsible. Yeah, it can literally you know, put them out of business uh, virtually. So uh, we've got about 10 minutes left. We've got four other topics to hit on here real quick, wrapping up um, highlights and, and looking back on 2022. So um, next on the list is let's talk uh, your book. Uh, give us your ele- best elevator pitch about your book um, and how it's become an industry tool. Okay, here goes the elevator pitch for the cybersecurity mindset. Um, it serves It serves as a thinking model so that people can um, operate cybersecurity in a proactive state. Right. So that means that when I wrote the book, I was always wondering, okay, what is this simplistic way to structure cybersecurity in a format that would allow people to think proactively so that people can see the truth? Part of the problems that I noticed in the industry was that cybersecurity was very complex, okay? And much of the written information pertaining to cybersecurity comes in a very complex format. So I believe that it, that if I could write a book in a common sense approach, I could help remediate some of those concerns for cybersecurity itself. So, so when you think of the cybersecurity mindset, you know, you think of it as a thinking model, okay? Right. And it's going to allow you to think proactively about engaging cybersecurity. And it's somewhat similar, similar to, let's say, if I was an NFL coach, right? Right. It's like your playbook. Yes, right? that's right. It is your resource guide. It's your playbook. Um, and it's your toolkit right. that you can use. So, so when NFL coaches come out on Sunday, so we notice notice that the coaches have a play card, offensive right. and uh, defensive yeah, strategy. Yeah, right. So, so just imagine the cybersecurity mindset in itself is just serving as a playbook. Right. So that means that if that if you're a cybersecurity expert, then you could use that on a daily basis just to understand how to navigate cybersecurity. If you're a student in college, then it serves it serves as your resource guide. Yeah, so right. I mean, it really covers the whole gamut of um, not just the the industry of cybersecurity, but also pertinent to um, where you find yourself as an individual or a company or a nonprofit uh, in that space. And again, you can check out, uh, get a copy of that book right at DwayneHart.com. And uh, so next on the short list is, this should be relatively brief, but uh, there's an annual conference for the industry. Talk to us uh, in 30 seconds or less what, where and where that conference was and what you gleaned about that and why somebody might attend. On Forces Communication Electronics Association, I went to TechNex Cyber, which was located in Augusta, Georgia. I go there every year. Okay, um, This is a major conference where all of the government um, – technology vendors come to learn more about cybersecurity and to see where the government is headed. And as of now, the government is headed towards zero trust. Wow. Zero, zero trust is a mythology um, that the government is really trying to bring on board so that they can, uh, you know, so that, so that they can remove away from trust, but verify right. into you don't trust no one at all. Wow. Okay, so you consistently want to have that that type of identification for uh, users. But but there's another one called SOFIC, which okay. is which is special operations um, conference that they held down in Tampa, Florida as well too. So if you're out there, um, type type in TechNet T E C H N E T and attend some of those conferences. Yeah. So again, this is the man that's not only written the book on it, has the podcast on it, but is staying on, on top of what's what's current in the industry. Um, OK, so uh, four and five on the list. So you've had your YouTube channel for a minute, as they say. Um, give us a stat. What kind of numbers are you getting on your YouTube uh, platform for this year? I have saw that I had one point one million views. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's intense. Been, that's been a lot of views on my YouTube channel. And I think it's driven for the content that I have because the content is based on uh, workforce development and all different sectors of cybersecurity itself and also serves as a repository for marketing the cybersecurity mindset. 
Yeah, so that that speaks to two points. One is that um, this is a topic that's of high interest. People are searching for uh, more information on cybersecurity on YouTube, which is the second largest search engine on the planet, obviously behind Google. Um, So people are on uh, YouTube wanting to learn, and they're finding you, obviously, as a valuable resource because you're all in this. You've done your homework. You've... um, uh, you're persistent and consistent on creating content on that subject matter. So 1.1 million, that's that's very impressive. So our last topic is something exciting. You literally just got into um, uh, creating near the end of 2022. Uh, talk to us about your uh, live stream platform. Oh, live screen for dedicated to the career development area of cybersecurity. I've always felt that the cybersecurity industry has some great people that are trying to progress their careers. So I wanted to take all their, take all the information that I knew and experienced in my career and to deliver it in a new platform. So I thought about live streaming and it kind of worked out well and it has helped a lot of um, individual channel their career through cybersecurity. Some of the, some of the Facebook groups and some of the LinkedIn groups and, um, and uh, all the connectors on LinkedIn are definitely enjoying it. Um, I guess, you know, periodically I go get a uh, inbox uh, message to say that, you know, the YouTube channels I have been out a lot and on Facebook as well too. I try to share it as much as possible. So, so, you know, the live screen served its purpose. I want it to be, uh, most, I want to be closer when I speak to people, so I decided to go live screen so yeah, yeah. can have a video, you know, yeah, seeing very authentic talk. in real time and all yes. that stuff. Yeah. yeah, so it's awesome. All right. Yeah. So, Dwayne, um, again, uh, it's been fun. It's been educational on my part. I've enjoyed uh, being on the other side of the microphone. Uh, not only listen to your podcast, but interacting as well. So I think um, this has been great. Looking forward to uh, 2023. And with that, stay tuned for our next episode. That's our actual topic. Any yes. closing thoughts on your part? Let's stay cyber safe and let's keep the cybersecurity mindset engaged.